my ocean, my soil, my flowing streams, my forests. They all can take you or leave you. How you choose to live each day, whether you regard or disregard me, doesn't really matter to me. One way or the other, your actions will determine your fate, not mine. I am nature. I will go on. I am prepared to evolve. Are you? Climate change, it's real, it's serious, and it's up to us to solve it. In the last two decades, we've experienced 14 of the hottest 15 years on record. By 2050, drought and chronic water shortages could impact a billion people, while millions more will be at risk from coastal flooding. It can seem overwhelming, but there's reason for hope. If we embrace solar and wind power to their full potential, we can cut the world's yearly carbon emissions by a third. Already, Germany generates 27% of its electricity from renewables, with a goal of 80% by 2050. Denmark has shown it can produce more wind energy than it can use. And England is building the world's biggest offshore wind farm. Communities large and small are taking steps. A new public building in Mexico City has an exterior that breaks down air pollutants, erasing the effects of 1,000 cars each day. Paris installed street tiles that harvest energy from foot traffic. Other cities are paving streets with smog-eating concrete and sidewalks with recycled materials. Individuals can make a difference too through the choices we make every day. If every American driver drove 10 miles less each week, it could eliminate more than 100 billion pounds of carbon from the air each year. New innovations are making important strides possible, and more are on the way, but we can't wait. Reimagining our world's energy future will take a shared sense of urgency from countries, companies, cities, and all of us. Working together, real change is possible. Makakalikasang araw po. Welcome to our Kamayan para sa Kalikasan Forum. We will begin our program with our Zoom etiquette to be followed by an opening prayer and the Philippine National Anthem. Also, we are currently live streaming on our Green Convergence GCFP page. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. We'll now have the opening prayer. O Lord God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, the sky and the seas, 
Look kindly on us, your children of the Philippine Islands, our home. We are now beset with tensions over our West Philippine Sea. We pray for your peace over the part of our island and waters. Help us to act now for the good of future generations and all creatures. Help us to become instruments of your peace and love. Amen. Let's pause for a while for a special prayer. For Arnel O. Subala, the husband of Anna who recently passed away. Eternal rest grant unto Arnel, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May our beloved Arnel rest in peace. Amen. 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 Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Okay, thank you, Dr. Alviar, for that wonderful prayer. And once again, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tessa Oliva of Green Convergence, and I will be one of your moderators today. Uh, you might be wondering where our regular host, Marie Marciano, is. Well, her son's father, father-in-law, passed on, and she is now in Ilocosur to condole with the family. So our sincerest condolences, Marie. All right, this is the 396th episode of Kamayan. Would you believe 396? Wow. Well, before we continue, allow me to call on our other moderator, a trustee of Green Convergence and a longtime environmental and climate action advocate, David D'Angelo. Hi, David. Hi, Montessa. Good uh, afternoon to everyone and welcome to another episode of Kamayan Forum. We would like to acknowledge our, uh, all our participants, especially to the organizations who are with us today. Uh, I think we have the National Council of Women of the Philippines with us, the Philippine Women's University, the TUP Green Society, the Green Party of the Philippines, Bayanihan para sa Kalikasan Movement Inc. There's also representative that will be coming, I think, from the Technological University of the Philippines, Genwat Energy Solutions, the Institute of Spirituality in Asia, Climate Reality Project Philippines. So I'm also a member of the Climate Reality Project. We also have representatives from the Philippine Movement for Climate Justice, the De La Salle University, and also people all the way from the Iligan Medical Center College, PWU, Philippine Women's University, we also have people from the Ecolog Ecology Ministry, the I Archdiocese of the Manila, the City College of San Jose del Monte, Miriam College. Uh, we also have from Dalubay, Daloy ng Buhay, the Daughters of Charity, St. Mary's College of QC, uh, from Laudato Si Movement Philippines, from ACMA National Coalition Filipinas, Chiro Youth Movement Philippines, College of Mary Immaculate Incorporated of Pampandi Mulacan. Wow. Coalition Isalbar Pintas Tila Union. UP Baguio, St. College, St. Paul College of Ilocos Sur, and Nature Awareness and Conservation NGO. 
Uh, there seems to be a lot of organization as well and individuals who are very, very interested with our topic for today, Tessa. Right, right. We will have a stimulating discussion on the possibility of declaring the West Philippine Sea as a peace zone. Mm -hmm. We will learn about the richness of our valuable natural resources, the West Philippine Sea, mm -hmm. which talagang ako, I don't really know so much about it, but this is an opportunity to learn more about our natural resource and how we can protect it. Alam mo, Tessa, yung itong uh, West Philippine Sea, palas matagal ko nang naririnig. Eh. Kasi number one naging problema dito, yung mga taklobo natin na talaga namang halos maubos. No? Kaya gustong gusto natin itong maproteksyonan. And I think one of the uh, process that should be done is really talking about how to declare it as a free zone. And hopefully, through this forum, we will gain insights from the presentations and exchanges and get motivated to advocate for a peace zone for the West Philippine Sea. And yes. for those who miss this forum, of course, a recording will be uploaded on the Green Convergence Philippine Facebook page, which we also hope you can share on your uh, Facebook profiles as well para mas marahi pa po ang makapanood at mas mabroaden pa yung awareness ng lahat tungkol dito sa uh, West Philippine Sea na pag-uusapan natin. Right. So at this point, David, we will now have the opening remarks to be delivered by a Merino sister who is also a CPA. She is currently the executive director of Miriam College's Environmental Studies Institute. She took up her master's program on the environment, peace, and security at the University of Peace in San Jose, Costa Rica, a learning institution established by United Nations. Well, she is also the president of Green Convergence. So, ladies and gentlemen, we proudly give you Sister Marvi Misolas to give the opening remarks. Uh, thank you very much, Tessa. And I would like to uh, welcome everyone to Kamayan. Uh, good afternoon or even good morning and good evening to everybody who are watching outside the Philippines. Uh, thank you for joining us. Our topic this afternoon, proposed West Philippine Sea as a peace zone, brings to mind two important concepts, environmental security and multilateralism. Encyclopedia of Ecology mentions three defining attributes of environmental security. First, it observes that the environment is the most transnational issue. And its security is an important dimension of peace, national security, and human rights. Second, in this century, about a third of current global and land cover will be transformed. Therefore, humanity will have to make choices over consumption, ecosystems, restoration, preservation, or degradation. And lastly, environmental security is vital to the national security, seeing the interconnectedness of humans and our nat limited natural resources. Uh, to continue on, the West Philippine Sea is a classic example of an issue in environmental security. According to the um, <clears throat> Center for Preventive Action, China's sweeping claims of sovereignty over the sea and the sea's estimated 11 billion barrels of untapped oil and 190 trillion cubic feet of natural gas has antagonized competing claimants. These are uh, the states of Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Taiwan, and Vietnam, and of course, China. As early as 1970s, countries began to claim islands and various zones in the uh, South China Sea, such as Spratlys Island, which I think we know possess rich natural resources and fishing areas. Um, in this uh, Kamayan Forum, Mr. Joaquin Silvestri will present on the richness of the West Philippine Sea's marine biodiversity. Um, we are looking forward to that. Uh, there are different positions. China maintains that under international law, foreign mil militaries are not able to conduct intelligence gathering activities such as reconnaissance flights 
in its exclusive economic zone. China maintains a U-shaped route that stretches over 700 nautical miles from the China's coastline, encircling most South China Sea and West Philippine Sea. This path is what they call the Nine Dash Line. China claims everything inside as its own, ignoring protests from the neighboring countries. The, the, to protest China's claims, uh, claimant countries and states, and the United States under the UN Convention of the Law of the Sea or UNCLOS should have a freedom of navigation through EEZ in the sea and to notify claimants of military activities. In 2016, the Permanent Court of Arbitration at The Hague issued its ruling on a claim brought against China by the Philippines under UNCLOS, ruling in favor of the Philippines in almost every count. While China is a signatory to the treaty which established the tribunal, it refuses to accept the court's authority. So in recent developments, satellites show that China has been increasingly uh, reclaiming the land and physically increasing the size of islands, creating new islands altogether, in addition to uh, militarizing them. So to protect its political security and economic interest in the region, uh, the United States recently challenged China's territorial claims. And also it bolsters support um, in, uh, for the Southeast Asian partners. Also, in response to China's assertive presence in the disputed territory, uh, Japan has sold military ships, equipment to the Philippines and Vietnam in order to improve their maritime security capacity and to deter the Chinese aggression. This escalating tension must be resolved peacefully. Multilateralism must play an important role in solving this crisis. ASEAN must be proactive in maintaining all peaceful resolve to avoid further destruction in the transnational waters and the bi biodiversity within it. ASEAN and superpowers in Asia must lead the way to forge a peaceful coalition to protect the peaceful coexistence of Asians and the natural resources now and for next generations. We are eager to learn about Attorney Belica of the NR's position to declare it as a protective marine area. And of course, we welcome to learn about the petition of Attorney Oposa to declare the West Philippine Sea as a peace zone, which was signed, me included, by supporters globally uh, and submitted to the permanent mission of the Republic of the Philippines to the United Nations. So again, welcome, and we continue. Thank you very much. Thank you, sister. David? Yes, thank you, Sister Marby. At this point, we'd like to inform everyone that we will have an adjustment in our program flow. We have three speakers for today lined up. And each will first discuss their respective topics. After this, we will have an open forum where the resource speakers will answer the questions right away. Yes. Ah, so, talaga, sister, no? Talagang mga escalating tension in this West Philippine Sea. So, I'm sure we're all eager to start. But before we continue, may I, I ju just remind everyone to keep our microphones on mute while our resource speakers are delivering their, uh, their topics. And let's avoid distracting ambient noise. Meanwhile, you may use the chat box for comments, reactions, and messages. And habang kumukulog-kulog sa background, the ambient na ambient noise and the rain, let me introduce, ladies and gentlemen, our first speaker for today. He took up BS Biology at UP Diliman in 2018. He was the monitoring officer at DENR NCR and an environment management specialist in 2019. In 2020, he was the assistant project coordinator of DENR Biodiversity Management Bureau and currently serves as the project evaluation officer of BMB, Coastal and Marine Division, DNR, 
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our first speaker to talk about biodiversity in the West Philippine Sea. Please welcome Mr. Joaquin Silvestre. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for the introduction, sir. Uh, yes, I, my name is Joaquin Silvestre. Po. I've been with the DNR Biodiversity Management. Management Bureau since 2018, and uh, I'll be discussing the biodiversity in the West Philippine Sea. Uh, let me just uh, have a few moments, I'll prepare my presentation. Okay, is everything clear? All right. Okay, so uh, first we'll show uh, the map. So uh, when we talk about the West Philippine Sea, uh, we're not just talking about the Kalayaan Island group or the Spratlys Islands, but we're talking about the maritime zones uh, from uh, Batanes all the way down to Palawan. Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry, what's all this? There you go. So uh, this is by virtue of administrative order number 29 of 2012. So... Uh, we can see uh, this definition of the West Philippine Sea, although it's not uh, uh, defined yet or de uh, delineated yet. So the West Philippine Sea uh, constitutes around uh, more than one third of Philippine ter uh, uh, seas and waters and hosts around one third of the Philippines coral reefs. Altogether, the reefs therein form the largest reef areas among the seven other countries in the South China Sea. So, uh, ganito po karami yung ating uh, coral reefs and coastal and marine resources sa uh, Pilipinas. Uh, citing some of our scientists, uh, to lose the West Philippine Sea would be, uh, um, to compare it with a person, it would be something like losing a limb or losing an integral part of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, although it's some, of, uh, although it is one of the richest areas in our country, it also faces a lot of threats. Uh, one such would be uh, illegal and unreported uh, or unregulated fishing, such as in this video above. We have uh, Veer's imagery, which is basically a satellite imagery of uh, vessels using uh, ultralight or to uh, to attract lots of fish in the area. So one of the hot spots for this is in the West Philippine Sea. Uh, there's also uh, part of the UF would be uh, uh, the cyanide fishing shown here below. And then other threats would be illegal wildlife trade. We have here a photo of confiscated marine turtles. Uh, from uh, 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 also from illegal unreported uh, fishing vessels, and then the third uh, change in ocean warming. So here on the right, it shows uh, coral bleaching, which is when the corals lose their uh, symbiotic organisms that give them food uh, due to uh, different stressors. Could be uh, the warming ocean, or it could be acidification. Uh, up here, we have another photo. It's one of our other threats. These are crown of thorns starfish or cots. Mm -hmm. uh, they feed on live coral. Uh, some of the reasons they exist in uh, large numbers are they, uh, or we have outbreaks, are because we've lost a lot of their uh, natural predators, such as triton shells. Uh, other threats in the area are coastal erosion. We have here a photo of uprooted, an uprooted palm in Pagasta Island. And of course, one of our uh, emerging threats, but very persistent threat, I mean, uh, marine debris or litter. So when we looked at these uh, uh, plastic bottles and their labels, they come from uh, different countries, uh, around the South China Sea and not just from the Philippines. So uh, moving on from the threats, let's talk about the biodiversity. 
in the West Philippine Sea. So the DNR has supported uh, a number of expeditions to the West Philippine Sea. Uh, some of the first uh, in 2017, all the way up to 2021 or 2022. And uh, one of the, not really issues, but yeah, there is a a gap in the data because before these expeditions, some of the last expeditions in the area would would have been back in the 1980s or 1990s. So there's a a little under 20 year gap in information in the Kalean Island group at least. So here uh, we're showing a an ocean modeling uh, projection of coral and fish larvae. So the Kalean Island group is a source of coral and fish larvae, not just for the the Philippines, but also for the entire South China Sea region, based on this projection, of course. Uh, so the Kalean Island group being home to vast coral reefs, uh, it, it's a, it produces coral and fish larvae, which, uh, which can travel uh, great distances carried by the currents, carried by, uh, yeah, ocean currents, and can, can, uh, end up in different areas all over the the South China Sea. Uh, the nearest would be here in west of Palau, and you see a concentration of the coral and fish larvae, and it it's able to spread all over the region. Meaning, it can it contributes to the ecosystem services all over this area, which of course should be service info, input for uh, protecting and conserving the resources here and uh, therein. So based on these expeditions and uh, of course long-term data, uh, uh, we were all also able to observe that there is some connectivity between different reefs. Some reefs serve as sources of the fish and genetic material or larvae. And again, uh, the waters are interconnected by the currents. So the the currents deliver these uh, materials, these biodiversity materials or genetic materials to different sink reefs uh, in different areas. We also experience a sort of reversal of this process. So during Amihan or the northeast monsoon, we see some of the re reefs on the eastern side serving as sources uh, and providing materials to reefs on the western side. And this reverses during the Habagat or the southwest monsoon, where in the western area reefs uh, would provide the these biodiversity uh, resources to reefs on the eastern side. There are also self-seeding reefs, which provide uh, materials, uh, the biodiversity resources to their own reefs. Uh, so they experience a sort of, uh, the, the current just kind of circulates within that, that area. So uh, you'd have to protect this area to uh, protect the area since it's the only source for its uh, genetic materials or biodiversity resources. Source reefs. Oh, this is a better explanation. Fingerlings, itlog, o larvae ng mga ista at corals na tinatangay naman ng agos patungo sa mga sink reefs sa ibang bahagi ng bansa upang doon dumaki. Na siya namang hinuhuli ng ating mga kababayang mangingista. Mayroon din tayong tinatawag na self-seeding reefs kung saan ang bahura ay nakadepende sa sarili niyang supply ng fish at coral larvae. Isang halimbawa nito ay ang masinlog o yung bay. Nakaka-influensya rin ang amihan at habagat sa pagiging source, sink, at self-seeding reefs. So, uh, if you're able to listen to the video, there was a short explanation similar to what I just explained. Yeah, this is the same, uh, further showing uh, the changes in ocean currents due to Amihan and Dabaga. Uh, one of the other studies conducted during these expeditions were experiment, uh, was experimental fishing 
this was conducted in Sabid na Shoal and Pag-asa Island, uh, wherein hook, hook and line fishing and spear gun fishing or experimental fishing was conducted. Uh, and an estimated catch per fisher in kilograms per hour of around 1 to 1.5 was observed in Sabina Shoal and around half uh, half a kilo per hour to more than a little over one kilo per hour in Pagasa Island. So there is some potential for uh, fishing in our some of our offshore reefs based on this experimental study. So the coral reefs in the West Philippine Sea, uh, or in the Kalayaan Island Group, rather, cover an estimated area of around 600 to 1,000 square kilometers. Uh, yeah, uh, or about 30% of the total reef areas of the Philippines. Okay. Uh, and based on uh, a study of the reefs in all over the country and and in the West Philippine Sea in particular, we the there was high uh, rather high mortality or uh, death of corals in the Kalayaan Island group. Uh, while not necessarily due to uh, due to uh, destructive fishing, but we observed a lot of dead coral with algae, which means that the corals. Uh, bleached at some point in time and eventually were uh, covered with uh, algae, which means uh, they're unable to recover. Uh, although, uh, despite this uh, rather high coral mortality in the Kalayan Island group, uh, it was also observed that uh, the species richness or the different uh, number of species that can be ob of fish that can be observed in the Kalayaan Island group was rather high, uh, comparable even to some of our marine protected areas in the Philippines, such as Apo Reef or Tobataha Reef. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is uh, one example of how uh, how sort of a degrading uh, habitat or coral reefs can still provide uh, very good ecosystem services and would still uh, and could be indicative of how uh, protection and conservation could, could improve this further or that protection and conservation shouldn't be limited to just uh, pristine coral reefs. So, so I'd like to share with you some of the biodiversity also observed in Pagas Island. So uh, there are uh, sea grasses here. So Pagas Island is one of the only islands in the Kalayan Island group, if not the only island in the Kalayan Island group with uh, sea grass meadows. So it's a very thick and very uh, vast meadow, rather thick and rather vast. So sea grass is very important because uh, they hold a lot of uh, carbon, uh, blue carbon, and this also serves as uh, habitats for some of the juveniles of uh, certain fish species. So we see a lot of commercially important fish too, uh, and surprisingly there are a lot of giant clams, but as can be observed in many features of the Kalayan Island group. We have this uh, fairly rare blue coral, uh, Heliopora cirlea. We also observed uh, uh, marine turtles nesting in Pagasa Island. So, uh, and as per interviews, it's quite common in other features in the Kalayan Island group. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, there's a regular nesting of marine turtles in this area. Uh, so now I'd like to share with you some of the initiatives to protect the offshore biodiversity in the West Philippine Sea, uh, aside from our expeditions uh, to study what, because, uh, of course, our expeditions come first and foremost because uh, we we have to measure uh, the resources they're in, so, so we're able to properly manage them. So back in uh, 2013, uh, there was 
a strategic action plan uh, formulated for the West Philippine Sea. This was done through the Coral Triangle Initiative, but this uh, re- quite sort of remained the draft. So what was done in 2017, there was another uh, national stakeholder consultations to uh, to sort of revise or update this uh, strategic action plan. Uh, so this is one of the plans uh, based on the different uses, the different resources in the West Philippine Sea, uh, and how we can uh, a plan how on how we can manage th- better this uh, very important area. And then two, of course, as I presented earlier, uh, we've been supporting a number of uh, scientific research and expeditions to the West Philippine Sea in partner in partnership with uh, uh, the academe, especially the Marine Science Institute of the University of the Philippines. But uh, of course, we'd want to expand the the capacity of the Philippines and uh, the academe not just uh the university of the philippines but uh of course we don't, we will need to engage the universities in palawan and even in other universities west of luzon to uh to fully uh understand the biodiversity and processes happening in the west philippine sea not just the kalayan i think yeah. Uh, so these are some of the sites uh, that we've assessed in the Kalayan Island Group. So again, it's very important that we assess these sites because uh, we need to know uh, we need to know what's there. So we know how the habitats change. We know what we're losing. We can also use this information to uh, to determine what we've lost during. Uh, natural disasters. One such was Typhoon Odette. Uh, some uh, interviews in Pagasa Island. Uh, some of the locals would mention that this uh, Typhoon Odette was one of their first experiences of uh, uh, of a typhoon in the area, and it wasn't. Uh, it was really quite destructive. So we'll need to know what's there so we can assess what we've lost. And then, of course, uh, we have a major program at the DNR, the Coastal and Marine Ecosystems Management Program, uh, wherein we want to uh, identify the threats to the coastal and mar- marine environment so we can properly address through through capacity building, through uh, uh, well marine protected areas, and of course, to, uh, uh, yeah, to comprehensively address these threats through also through partnerships uh, we also have uh, available to us some multi- multilateral and regional initiatives such as the coral triangle uh, the mc there's a strategic uh, action plan for the south china sea which is an years old uh, project and we also have a, a lot of funding agencies which can also provide their support through different projects so I think uh, our other speakers will be discussing this later, but there are some related bills on the West Philippine Sea filed uh, in the 19th Congress. One such is by Congressman uh, Edward Hagedorn uh, declaring a the three nautical mile zones around the Kalayan Island Group. We have someone to discuss this later. And then our maritime zones bill, uh, bills rather, and then our archipelagic sea lanes bills. Uh, there are also other bills like a uh, West Philippine Sea Authority and uh, some tourism bills also related. And then some house resolutions uh, such as this resolution urging the national government to regain authority over Panatag Shoal or Scarborough Shoal and the Kalayan Island Group. Uh, and a house bill institutionalizing the mandatory use of West Philippine Sea or Kadurang Dagat ng Pilipinas uh, to refer to the maritime areas uh, on the western side of the Philippines. Excuse me. Okay, so uh, 
one of the newer uh, international or global uh, frameworks is this post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework wherein uh, the Philippines has committed to the 30 by 30 target, which is a global target. So it's not just the Philippines target, uh, but uh, different countries all around the world will be, uh, have also committed to this, but it's targeting 30% of the world's land and oceans to uh, have some sort of protection uh, measures by 2030. Uh, then, so in... In consideration of this post-2020 global biodiversity framework, we've also initially identified what areas uh, we can, one, uh, recognize the protection measures they're in. There, there are different kind, uh, kinds of protection measures uh, outside of marine protected areas, such as maybe tourism areas, which have secondary conservation value, or, or other other such similar areas, or even uh, indigenous community conserved areas or the under ancestral domains of our indigenous peoples. And then three, of course, uh, possible ex uh, expansion of areas for protection under conservation manage uh, management to include offshore marine areas, especially those beyond national jurisdiction. So this is another uh, post-2020 global biodiversity framework, which we're still uh, exploring, of course, how we can uh, fully materialize this. Uh, I think that's all for this. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, the rest of the presentations from our other presenters. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Silvestre. Hi, nako, talagang it's so rich, no? We can see that that is where new mga genetic materials of our different kinds of fish come from, and they are brought uh, to the different parts of the country. Yung, yung mga fish larvae and how important the corals are, and the, the uh, turtles and other mga species, marine species, no? And madami na palang mga bills and nakafile, pero. There's also a call for the academe, maybe, to help in the research work and then monitoring. So maybe this can all be discussed later, because right now, we will now go to our second speaker. He is also a young lawyer, a young practicing lawyer, licensed real estate broker, and a Christian pastor. And he is a professor at the San Beda University, teaching taxation and business law to arts and science students. Attorney Belhika, I hope I said your, your name right, served as the youngest consultant to the Office of the Presidential Anti-Organized Crime Commission in 2019. Currently, he is the legal consultant of Congressman Edward Hagedorn. So, ladies and gentlemen, to discuss marine protected, protected area in the West Philippine Sea, a warm applause for Attorney Jeremiah Belica, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Ma'am Tessa. Uh, sir David, thank you very much, Mr. Silvestre. I'm Attorney Jeremiah Belica. I'm the former Secretary and Director General of the Under Red Tape Authority. Uh, and I'm also an environmental planner, by the way. Um, and uh, I'm uh, part of the team uh, that... Uh, has been pushing uh, for the passage of this bill uh, through our Congressman Congressman Edward Hagdorn. And I would be sharing to you some salient points of House Bill number 6373 that is being championed by our Congressman Hagdorn, uh, which, by the way, is sending his regards to everyone. Uh, it is... Uh, Unfortunate that he is uh, unable to physically uh, attend, but he is very much uh, excited and uh, willing to engage with everyone as soon as he can. So uh, House Bill number 6373 or the KIG and Scarborough Shoal Marine Protected Area Act of 2022 was introduced by uh, Congressman Hagi Dorn. Uh, late last year and has uh, uh, 
garnered some attention because of its importance. I'm uh, thankful that uh, our distinguished Mr. Silvestre was able to articulate very well the environmental importance of uh, the West Philippine Sea. Uh, so now let me just uh, focus uh, more a little bit on the contents of this bill. So the Spratlys serve as a major global breeding ground of fish in the South China Sea, despite occupying only 2.5% of the world's total ocean and sea surface. The South China Sea is one of the richest marine areas in the world, which is actually home to diverse marine ecosystem, over 3,000 species of fish and 600 species of coral reef. Uh, as uh, eloquently and uh, comprehensively uh, discussed a while ago. So let me just uh, read a quotation from um, Congressman Hagidorn uh, with his intention to really uh, pass, in his intention to really pass this bill. He said to quote, I stand firm in my belief that pushing for the environmental protection of Kalayan Island Group and Scarborough Shoal is a common ground that every Filipino could rally behind. Through this bill, it is my hope that eventually other adjoining states would also recognize that the protection of the rich marine resources and environment of the West Philippine Sea is our shared interest and responsibility. The corals, atolls, and other natural resources within the West Philippine Sea, South China Sea, and other political and geographical partitions are one integral, united, and sustainable ecosystem. Therefore, it should be protected as one. Humanity must treat these as God's gift and shared inheritance to, uh, to all of us, regardless of race, nationality, and ethnicity. End of quote. Needless to say that the view of uh, the author of this bill and the spirit of this bill is more of an environmental protection rather than a territorial uh, dispute uh, uh, legislation. We, in, we foresee that uh, this bill, uh, Congressman uh, Hagedorn uh, did mention that environmental protection is a common ground not only for the Philippines, but also for the adjoining states who also have uh, their own interest in environmental protection. Sabi nga po nila, ano pa ang paghahati-hatian ninyo kung ang, ang, kung ang uh, lupa na inyong pinag-aawayan ay wala na rin halaga. So whoever has the legal um, uh, authority over these areas, all the more has the uh, utmost uh, interest to protect the environment in these areas. So, the environmental protection actually in our in our belief is a common ground that we could actually use to promote harmony and unity across the region. So let me now go to some of the salient provisions of House Bill 6373. Maybe you're asking, ano ba ang uh, gusto mangyari ng batas na ito or ng panukalang batas na ito? So the complete title of the bill is an act declaring the three nautical miles surrounding the Kalayaan Island Group in Scarborough Shoal in the West Philippine Sea as Marine Protected Area under RA number 7586 or the National Integrated Protected Areas System Act of 1992 as amended by RA 11038 or by the national or or the national or the Expanded National Integrated Protected Area System Act of 2018. So in sum, uh, what the bill intends to pass into law is the three nautical miles surrounding the Kalayan Island groups and the Scarborough Shoal to be declared as marine protected areas. This is in accordance to scientific uh, studies that the three nautical miles from uh, the baselines of this uh, of these uh, uh, islands would uh, normally uh, have the concentration of coral reefs and atolls and we know that coral reefs and atolls is the are the breeding ground of our 
the fishes that uh, could that feeds not only the Philippines but the entire world. So that is uh, what it seeks to declare as marine protected area, the three nautical miles uh, of each and every islands of the Kalayan Island groups and the Scarborough Shoal. So Section 2 gives us the declaration of the policy. Uh, it is taken from Article 2, Section 16 of the 1987 Constitution that declares that the state shall protect and advance the right of the people to a balanced and helpful ecology in accord with the rhythm and harmony of nature. Likewise, RA 7586 or the National Integrated Protected Area System or the NIPAS as amended by the e -NIPAS law. It also mandates the state to secure for the Filipino uh, the, of present or for future generations the perpetual existence of all native plants and animals through the establishment of a comprehensive system of integrated protected areas within the classification of the national park as provided for in the Constitution. To continue, consistent with Article 2, Section 2 of the 1987 Constitution, is also to adopt the generally accepted principles of international law as part of the law of the land and to adhere to the policy of peace, equality, justice, freedom, cooperation, and amity with all nations as key in attaining the protection, conservation, preservation, and promotion of the biodiversity, ecosystem, and all other natural resources. And it also adheres to Article 123 of the United Nations Convention on Law of the Seas or UGROS, which also requires the Philippines and other coastal states in semi-enclosed seas like the South China Sea to cooperate with each other in the exercise of their rights and in the performance of their duties under the said convention with respect to the protection and preservation of marine environment. In addition to this, um, the bill that is uh, being proposed uh, is also mindful of the arbitral tri tribunal ruling uh, insofar as it relates to environmental protection. But again, let me just uh, reiterate that the heart and the uh, spirit behind this uh, uh, bill is actually in an environmental sense because we do believe that each and every participant in uh, uh, in the West Philippine Sea or the South China Sea has a shared interest to protect, which is the environmental health and uh, well-being of uh, all marine lives in the region. Now, the scope of the law is uh, found in, uh, of the bill is found in Section 4. So the covered air, the area covered by the Kalayan Island Group in Scarborough Shoal Marine Protected Area that is subject that uh, by the law or the by, by the uh, bill shall be all the areas within the three nautical miles from the baseline surrounding the Kalayan Island Groups and the Scarborough Shoal as established by RA nine five two two or the baselines law. So, uh, isipin yun na lamang po if there are several islands you draw like uh, a, th a three nautical mile uh, radius around them. So yun po, no? So we want to declare all of the three nautical miles surrounding uh, each islands uh, in the Kalayan Island groups and the Scarborough Shoal uh, to be declared as, uh, as a marine protected area. Now, uh, maybe some of you are already thinking, how about those uh, which are uh, not uh, right now controlled by the Philippines or controlled by other countries or by other areas. But uh, nonetheless, uh, the Philippines would still have the power and the prerogative to declare these areas as, um, as marine protected. Okay, so on the declaration of the protected area in strict protection zone, it, the bill also says that it is hereby declared that the area covering the uh, Kigs MPA or the Kalayan Island Group Scarab Crusoe Marine Protected Area, as specifically intended in the preceding section, is hereby declared as protected area and shall enjoy the benefits and protection afforded by RA 7586 as amended or the ENIPAS law. 
Meaning, uh, there is already an existing law, as uh, many of us already know, uh, or uh, uh, the NIPAS or the ENIPAS, which uh, enables Congress to declare uh, areas or declare uh, 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 territories of the Philippines and even uh, uh, seascapes uh, to be declared as marine protected areas. And uh, under this law, there are certain prohibition, prohibited acts that uh, may not be allowed. Uh, and there are uh, restricted areas and there are also buffer zones that are established. Uh, so this bill actually uh, jumps off from uh, the previous RA 7586. So meron na pong uh, inaipas, inaipas, so hindi na po natin uh, to recreate uh, the inaipas, but simply to make use of all of the provisions of the inaipas law. So also, um, it also would now create uh, what we call a strict uh, protection zone. Uh, the DNR secretary also upon the recommendation of the, uh, the PAMBI or the Protected Area Management Bureau, may designate areas surrounding the uh, KIGS MPA as buffer zones for the purpose of providing extra layer protection where restrictions may be applied. So the bill also uh, gives a flexibility for the uh, uh, DNR secretary uh, through the recommendation of the uh, Protected Area Management Bureau that would also be created uh, through this law uh, to designate areas uh, which are strictly uh, strict protection zones, meaning wala pong human activities na pwede pong gawin. And uh, there are areas naman outside the strict protected zones or uh, even beyond the three nautical miles that may be declared as buffer zones. Buffer zones are uh, not a not, uh, strict protection area or not protected area but also our regulated areas uh, because this provides us as, uh, as a buffer uh, to the uh, uh, marine protected area. So uh, there, there are prohibited acts and penalties uh, that also uh, as is, was specified already by RA 7586. So uh, just to be clear, uh, fishing is not uh, is not a prohibited activity in this uh, protected area, but illegal and unregulated and destructive fishing is actually prohibited. But traditional fishing, it is not prohibited. So hindi ho ito mag uh, prohibit sa ating mga mga However, um, uh, Studies and data would show that uh, uh, dynamite and even uh, dangerous uh, destructive fishing um, is not uh, really uncommon in those areas. So uh, the regulated uh, uh, acts uh, would include fishing, but it is not a prohibited act. Uh, so the prohibited acts uh, are those which are already uh, mentioned in Section 20 of RA 7586 or the NIPAS law, and it uh, would simply now uh, adopt those prohibited acts. So, Section 7 now specifies the creation of the Kalayaan Island Group and Scarborough Shoal Protected Area Management Bureau, and also uh, the Protected Area Management Office. So, two offices are actually created. Uh, to oversee the protection of the marine uh, protected area of the KIGSS. So first is the Management Bureau uh, and also the uh, Management Office. So they are also created and uh, uh, given the powers as provided for already by the uh, NIPAS and INIPAS law. However, in addition to the uh, membership of, uh, of the uh, Marine Protected Ma Area Management Board, which includes the local government, 
the DNR, uh, the national government agencies uh, concerned. Uh, it also uh, uh, makes member through this bill the uh, already existing Palawan Council for Sustainable for, for Sustainable Development, which by the way is uh, right now uh, functioning very well. No, uh, that is actually monitoring the sustainable development uh, in the area of Palawan, including the area of the West Philippine Sea. So through this bill, uh, mas lalo ho silang palalakasin because now the management uh, of the area would now be under the management uh, management board uh, of the uh, uh, KIGS MPA. So they would also be represented. So Section 8 now provides for the management plan and engagement of cooperation of other agencies. So I would read the KIGS, KIGS PAMBI and the KIGS PAMO shall craft a management plan for the protection of the KIGS management protect, man, uh, marine protected area within one year from the effectivity of this act, which shall also be reviewed and assessed every three years for possible improvements or amendments or whenever the need arises. It shall include specific strategies and programs for the preservation and protection of atolls, reefs, and corals within the Kalayan Island Group's Scarborough Shoal Marine Protected Area. So the KIGS PAMBI and the KIGS PAMO shall also engage the cooperation of other government agencies in the implementation of their management plan. The DOTR, the DICT, the, D, the DA and DILG shall also provide assistance in monitoring of activities within the KIGS MPA, which may include, if necessary, the installation of monitoring devices on vessels and establishment of needed facilities within uh, the area. I think it was also mentioned uh, a while ago by the first speaker, uh, the scarcity of data in that area. And I think... Uh, the scarcity of needed data to really assess the situation, environmental situation and environmental health of the area, uh, allowing our vessels, uh, the private vessels also to have uh, monitoring devices uh, would also uh, allow us to monitor the environmental situation in, the, in that area. So I believe that the DOTR, the DICT could all also provide some guidelines on this. Now, on Section 9, the Kalayan Island Group and Scarborough Shoal Marine Protected Area Joint Oversight Committee. Now, this is now the third office that is being, uh, or third organization that is being created by this uh, uh, bill. So, to oversee the effective implementation of this act, a special Congress oversight, Congressional Oversight Committee to be known as uh, Kalayan Island Group Scarborough Marine Protected Area Joint Oversight Committee composed of the members from the Committees on Natural Resources and Committees on the West Philippine Sea from both Upper and Lower House of Congress is hereby created. So it means that uh, uh, the Environmental uh, and Natural Resources Committees ng both Senate and the House of Representatives would be part of the Oversight Committee. So the Oversight Committee, which shall be jointly headed by the chairpersons of the Committees on Natural Resources from both houses, shall convene biannually or as often as may be necessary in order to ensure the implementation of the law. So uh, the proposal of this bill is a biannual uh, uh, discussion to, to, to ensure the effective monitoring and uh, implementation of the of the law. So the KIGS PAMBI and the KIGS PAMO shall also submit an annual report to the Joint Oversight Committee on the status of the marine protected area and also the implementation of the law, which would also uh, involve uh, increasing or providing additional funding or even additional uh, resources. So that is uh, basically the... Uh, uh, quick highlights of the bill, uh, but let me just uh, again uh, uh, reiterate that 
uh, there has been uh, many um, recommendations, additional recommendations by the different government agencies. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, very productive and very fruitful um, recommendations have been given by the, uh, the uh, Department of National Defense, by the uh, DNR, of course, uh, by uh, the different private uh, groups, even the uh, uh, the UP Marine Science uh, 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 Department has also been uh, very supportive and uh, have given a lot of uh, data uh, in support of this uh, bill. So right now, the bill is... Uh, uh, in the process of uh, the, the committee rather of environment is in the process of coming up with its formal, formal or final uh, report to be submitted to the plenary. So uh, we do hope to uh, get the support of, uh, of uh, environmental organizations and environmentalists, even as the uh, ordinary mga tao, to really understand that. Uh, more than just a territorial dispute, what really is needed for us uh, to push not only in our country but in our region is the environmental protection of the West Philippine Sea. Because in truth and in fact, the fishes and even the environment knows no boundary pagdating po sa territories. All of them are interconnected and all of us are interconnected to the environment. Thank you very much and God bless us all. David? Thank you uh, very much, no? Attorney Velika. That's a very, very good discussion. Napaganda ng mga napag-usapan. And the bill, no? It is uh, very important to really protect uh, those areas kasi nakita naman natin the coral breaching, uh, yung mga taklobo natin na nawala doon. And I, I hope, no? I really hope based on our experience, no? Ma'am Tessa and every other organization, I really hope that bills like this will really be the priority you no know, legislations in both the house of uh, representatives and the senate of the philippines kasi ito talaga yung kailangan natin to bring about a better and a greener future for our country considering that we are already on a climate uh, crisis right, right yeah. now so thank you very much attorney balika for our own survival talaga yes definitely <laughs> And now let us introduce our third speaker. Uh, napaka exciting nito ating uh, third speaker, ladies and gentlemen. He is one of Asia's most influential and unconventional yet humble environmental warrior lawyers. His passion, dedication, and creative use of law underlie several momentous causes in the Philippines. He is also the founder of the School of the Sea or Sea and Earth Advocates, now known as Sea Camp, and the author of numerous works on law and nature in countries like the Philippines, where Oposa describes law as often taken as mere suggestion. His unique approach to legal action plays a crucial role in legalizing environmental justice. Ladies and gentlemen, Ramon Magsaysay, awardee for environmental law, please welcome attorney. Tony Oposa. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Oh, mayong uh, good afternoon, mayong magandang hapon sa inyong lahat at sa mga bisaya, mati, mayong hapon ninyo. Uh, can you share screen? Yeah, sige. Okay.
Yes, po, loud and clear. Okay, can you see me? No. Oh, yan na naman. Kakaloko-loko na naman ito. Never mind if you cannot see me so long as you see the, the presentation. Can you see the presentation? Can you hear me? Importante lang marinig niyo ako. Yes, yeah, po. We... And then you see the, the slides lang. Yes po. Okay. Welcome mga kaibigan. Uh, we are friends kahit may iba sa atin hindi pa nagkakakilala because we are friends who shared friendship is defined as people who shared passions. And we share a passion for the environment. Kanina pa nang pinag-uusapan pero sandali lang. Ano ba yung environment? Nakakain ba yan? Nabibili ba yan sa tindahan? Ayaw nga. Mm -hmm. But it's not moving. And then, oh, what is the environment? Is it about the birds and the bees? Okay. 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 The law of life. What is the environment? Is it about the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees? Or is it about life and the sources of life? of land, air, and water. The trees and the forests are the heart and the lungs that give us air to breathe. The land and the soil are the skin and the flesh that give us food to eat. The sea and the rivers are the blood and bloodstreams of life that give us water to drink. They are the vital organs of life on earth. Land, air, and water, the law of life. Uh, my friends, I have shifted my approach from always fighting 
to right the wrong, I am now moving next to search for stories of the good, the right, and the strong. That is called the Good Stories Movement. And recently, we held an international recognition event of good stories to give global gratitude to the moving characters. Among the awardees, among the awardees was our dear Nina Galang, being the fairy godmother of environmental education in the Philippines. And we launched this in the United Nations last October in the Philippine mission. Nandun yung mga big time na tao, sila si Brian Preston, Chief Justice of the Australian Environment Court, just Justice in the the Dambusa of South Africa, Nick Robinson, etc., etc. And the Good Stories Movement is, instead of me explaining it in words, ito na lang. Maybe you and I cannot do great things. We may not change the world in one day. still can change the story of the world by changing the storyline in our small way. The Good Stories Movement Much of what happens in this world is not bad. It is neutral, and much of it is good. But why do we hear only of the bad and the sad? Because bad news sells? This is all making us feel depressed, stressed, helpless and hopeless. No, we are not helpless. We can change the story of the world if we change the storyline.
My friends, mga kaibigan, can we please, can you please read this aloud? Everybody, you can unmute yourselves. Please read this aloud. We will have peace on earth. We will have peace on earth. When we have peace. When we have peace. With the earth. With the earth. With the earth. Ah, yes. Okay. Uh, during that event in the United Nations, uh, Good Stories was product of uh, part of it was the launch of a dream petition of a dream example of that slogan that we will have peace on earth if we have peace with the earth. Yang pinagawa yan ng mga dagat na yan, imbis pagawaya natin yan, ito, pinakita ko doon, pinakita ko sa kanila, doon. Oh, so. You guys read it aloud. Asia Marine Peace Corps. People's petition to the United Nations. We will love peace. Peace with the earth. Peace of Asia. The of water. Granted by some countries in Asia. It is a crown jewel of our universal heritage. The sea is the breeding the breeding grounds of the nursery of tropical culture. The surrounding states claim clear ownership of the sea. One wants to claim all. How can we claim humans own something that we did not create? That has been there long before we were born, and will be there long after we are gone. This is causing serious tension. Right. Good father of the family. Asian states are the good father of the family, family of humankind. As such, it is their duty to avenge and violence for their people. Good father, father is the care for mother. They must preserve this precious world. Cooperating, operating, networking. Rather than rather than compete, we take as much as we can from this. Can we get to operate? Can we preserve the strong jewel of the With the spirit of friendship, of friendship, good neighborliness, and happy cooperation. It will be an excellent example of the basic truth that we will have peace on earth. earth. When we have peace, when we have peace, we have peace. We have peace for the part of the country that is the first one that is the exclusive economic zone become the expanding economic zone. We respect the people and the good united communities. real example for the that motto or that slogan uh, many of you may know me that I am an impossible dreamer and I created this petition uh, basically ayun ang sinabi doon sa, sa video na yun and then pinapirmahan ko sa mga kaibigan ko all over the world Yung unang nakapirma, Vice President pa ng France. Ay, so, yan, dami. Si Nina Galang, siya nakapirma dyan. 
Marami akong kaibigan dito sa Pilipinas. Literally, all regions, including Africa, all regions of the world. I invited them to sign on. We are concerned residents of the earth. Yan, madami sila. Tapos, so we had a symbolic filing during that event. We had a symbolic filing of the petition sa Deputy Permanent Representative of the UN Philippine Mission. Yung nasa gitna niyan, si Ariel Pinaranda, yung nakaputi anak ko yan, yung bunso kong anak yan, kasi kinabukasan nila yung aputi nila. Pero sabi ko doon, doon sa so maraming tao, nung maraming tao, nag-file kami ng uh, ceremonial filing. No? Nandyan sila si David Foreman, sila mga mga big time ng mga tao. Nandun sila si Narinder Kakar, you know, who is uh, ambassador of the University of Peace. So sabi ni, Narin, ni uh, Ariel Pinaranda, hindi ko ito mong pwedeng mapahil sa, sa United Nations General Assembly kung hindi may approval kailangan may approval sa secretary, foreign secretary. So pagdating ko dito, gumawa ako ng secretary para sa, gumawa ako ng sulat para sa secretary, ito, tsaka copy furnished si Marcos, si um, Martin Romualde, sino, sino pa yan, no? Um, o siyempre, tapos kinapi furnished ko si Marcos, siyempre, hindi sila nakikinig sa akin. Wala namang nakikinig sa akin eh. Wala namang nakikinig sa akin dito sa Pilipinas. And this is not a new idea. As early as 2012, many of you may know that during the first controversy natin, as early as 2012, I sent an open letter to Pinoy. And it was even published in the Philippine Inquirer. Na huwag na natin pag yan. Because if we filed that petition, for example, in the UN General Assembly, China may have military superiority, but we will gain moral ascendancy and global political popularity. And no, that is not the, we're not going to, hindi tayo ang bida. Ang bibidahin natin ang human beings. Kasi we have been here only in the, if, the, if the earth is 24 seconds, uh, 24 hours has been here for 24 hours. We've been here only for the last 10 seconds. And tayo dapat nag-aalaga. Nag-aalaga sa mundo. Diba? So, eh, wala naman talagang nakikinig. Si okay lang. Ang isa lang ang nakinig sa akin. Isa lang ang nakinig sa akin. He is my spirit brother. And he also happens now, biglang naging, naging congressman siya. Uh, si Ed Hagedorn. Oh, nakinig siya sa akin. Tapos meron na siyang Meron na siya ang So, nag-file siya ng petition na to declare parts of the West Philippine Sea as marine protected area. Uh, Jeremiah, salamat sa tulong mo kay Ed na ginawa ninyo. Siya lang nakikinig, siya lang nakikinig sa akin. So, meron akong plano. Dahil, alam nyo naman buwang ako, I just do not think about impossible dreams. I just go ahead and do whatever it is I do want to do. And it's not about the success. It's not about the end result. Ang iniisip ko, sana, nag-usap na kami, kahapon nandito si Ed Hagedorn, uh, nag-usap na kami, na pare, partner naman talaga tayo, uh, we will call, ang action plan natin, I sent a copy to uh, Nina Galang last night. Uh, we will call for a meeting of the ambassadors of the ASEAN and the claimant countries. Uh, Aalis siya next week. Siguro pagbalik niya, papatawag kami ng meeting. Ako, pipirma, hindi siya itatapon lang naman yung sulat ko. Pero kung siya, pipirma, kasi kung Christman siya, kilala siya, si baka may makinig sa kanya. So magpapameeting kami at mag, uh, papameeting kami at mag... Uh, at ipapa, ipapakita natin ito, that we will have peace on earth if we have peace with the earth. So, anong agenda natin? Ganon. Pag-isipan muna natin yan. Anong agenda natin? Pag-isipan natin yan. Pag, inala, pag hindi natin pag-aagawan ang ating makukuha sa kadagatan, instead, ating aalagaan, tayong lahat magiging kaibigan. In the same manner na kayo, 
kayong lahat pareho tayo, we have shared passion, magkaibigan tayo kahit hindi pa tayo nagkakilala yung iba. So, this is all for fun. Wala namang, walang funding. Alam mo, lahat ng ginagawa ko, walang funding. Wala akong walang nag-uto sa akin, walang nagsusupervise sa akin. Basta gawin ko lang, gawin ko lang ang gusto kong gawin. Oh, how do you spell fun? F-U-N. Excuse me? F-U-N. Yeah, that means for friendship and unity with nature. My friends, the science of psychology shows that when people sing together, they create a strong bond for each other. Yun yung gagawin ko kung magpaposas, pupunta tayo yung mga ambassadors, pakakantahin natin silang lahat. Gaya ng gagawin ko ngayon, it creates a strong bond for peace and for happiness. And everybody ready? You can un kung mahiya kayo, you unmute you you mute your kwan. Pero <laughs> sa plang ako, lahat please kakanta, please kakanta. Hindi hindi ako ang kakanta. Kayo tayo ng lahat kakanta. Dahil hindi tayo nahihiya, remember Pilipino tayo, music is in our blood and in our bones. And do not sing from your mouth, do not sing from your throat, sing only from your heart. Kung tayong lahat kakanta, walang sintonado. Kung kakanta ka galing sa iyong puso, maganda ang tunog. And if you do not want to sing, you just speak it aloud. Alam nyo naman tong kanta na ito. Okay. Sing. Kaya kaya lang. Magkakantahin natin sila lahat. At saka 
we will also if kung meron kayong mga kilala na taga media imbitahin niyo dahil ako wala akong kilala taga media imbitahin niyo para kantahin din natin sila remember my friends that if we dream alone it is only a dream but when we dream with fellow dreamers like you suddenly the dream comes true there is a saying that when money is loved and the earth is used and even abused there is illness and sadness but when money is used to love and to care for the earth there will be wellness and happiness and they say anything that is worth doing cannot be done in one lifetime ah uh, but yung kailangan natin gawin hindi natin yung alagaan natin yung mundo we tried i've spent my whole career not lawyering for people but being the lawyer of the trees and the fish who all do not pay attorney's fees anything that is worth doing cannot be done in one lifetime but in this lifetime we can plant seeds hope oh. Hope oh, is spelled H O P E. Uh, Meron, can you please unmute it? Can you uh, can you please mute it because I can hear my my background. Can you please mute? Uh, yes, but in this lifetime we can plant seeds of hope. What is hope? It is to heal our planet Earth. And my friends, this is not an advocacy. My goal is not. To establish the Asia Marine Peace Park, panaginip lang yan. It's another impossible dream. It is simply to share the basic truth that we will have peace on Earth if we have peace with the Earth. Na papaliwan naglang natin sa kanila. And after that press conference, hopefully, given life. Given breath of health, iikot ako sa buong ASEAN. Kahit ako mag-isa, wala naman akong pamasahe. Sasakay na lang ako ng walis. Iikot sa buong ASEAN sa mga kaibigan ko at papapirma tayo. Because if ASEAN supports it, then as was mentioned earlier, if ASEAN, and I'm not just, I'm just just saying that we will, uh, we will just declare in the West Philippine Sea. Can be declared by simple or Marcos lang pwede ng presidente lang yung declare a presidential proclamation. Buong West Philippine Sea, and that is not an impossible. It's an impossible dream. We can declare yung sinabi ko don sa video, declare the whole EEC, the exclusive economic zone. We can transform it to become the enchanting ecosystem zones, and that is not a simple dream. Some Pacific Island countries have already done that. Palau, for example, has declared its entire EEC as a marine protected area with only a small portion of 20% as a multiple use zone. O pwede pala natin gawin yan. Kung pwede nilang gawin, bakit natin hindi pwede gawin? Eh kasi gusto na nag-aagawan tayo kung anong makukuha natin sa dagat eh. Again, my friends, it is I will invite you to the join, to join the joy of this journey. It's not about the destination because we're all ending up in the same destination anyway. But it is participating in the joy of the journey, of the journey of making peace on Earth by making peace with the Earth. Tapos yung mga China, yung mga hindi ko na sila hindi demanda. Dati ginagawa ko yun, dinidemanda ko lang sila. <laughs> Nandidemanda lang ako. Walang kwenta, yung, walang kwenta yung kaso sa Pilipinas. Laws in the Philippines are only suggestions. Sa dami ng batas natin, if we implemented only 1%, we will be a paradise. So kung sino sa inyong gustong tumulong, kung na tumulong, gusto sa inyong sumali, uh, let me know, send me, send me a message because I am doing this all alone. All alone, ang nagsusuporta lang sa akin na moral support na katuwang ko, ang kaibigan at kapatid ko sa puso na si Ed Hagedor. Kami lang dalawa ang partner nito. Tapos meron pa akong isang partner na uh, 
who was permanent representative of the United Nations. Of course, everybody knows him, Chief Justice Davide. He was the one who told me na yung idea, yung idea na yan, Tony, ituloy mo yan. Kasi uh, that's a good one. And, and a word of encouragement from him goes a long way with me. So kung sino sa inyong mag-volunteer na tumulong, tumulong kayo. Diba? And, but before I close, I would like kayong maraming ginagawa Sila Jeremiah, si Ma'am Nina, si Tessa, uh, kayo, kayo maraming ginagawa. To thank you, a little poem was made for you. And I would like, instead of reciting this poem, I would like you to watch this little film made up of chicken scratches of a crazy, of a crazy artist. our gift to you. that message is important na when you do something noble, not for yourself and something beautiful but no one notices do not be sad because ang araw daw ay uma, it rises every morning in a beautiful spectacle but the audience is asleep yung idea ng Asia Marine Peace Park matagal na yan more than a decade ago walang pumansin, finally Nagkaroon ng nagkaroon tayo ng nag, naging congressman si si Ed o siya ang gumawa ngayon so umpisa pa lang yan and given more life together ma, 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 and with your participation mga kaibigan marami masaya tayo what is important again is not the destination at saka ang isa kong action plan is that Kung pupunta man ang ambasador ng China doon sa meeting, kasi imbitahin din natin yung ambasador ng China, we're planning to have a meeting in Makati. Kantahan lang ng meeting. At saka, we will challenge them not to a fight. Remember, I will commend them that China is the country responsible for the spread, for the spreading of the happy energy of Buddha of Lin Yu Tang, of Confucius, and Lao Tzu. And instead of fighting, imbitahin ko sila, we will go to a disputed area, sa Spratly or kung saan saan, and then we will sit in meditation on the mantra that we will have peace on earth if we have peace with the earth. So, my friends, if we do that, we will have a beautiful world. And 
yun na nga kung hindi natin hindi natin pag-awayan pag-agawan kung anong makukuha natin sa lupa makukuha natin sa dagat kung tayo magsama-sama alagaan natin sila tayo ay magiging kaibigan tayo lahat magiging kaibigan and it will be a wonderful world and my friends I'm unmute unmute everybody there will be a lag but i don't care we're not this is not a concert anyway i i am going to ask everybody to please sing aloud para masaya kahit na magkabuhol-buhol yung ating boses magkabuhol-buhol yung ating uh, ano boses please uh, sing this aloud <laughs> Okay, this will be our last final song. That's a final. Okay. I see trees so green. Red roses too. I see so For me and you. And you. I see myself. <laughs> what a wonderful world. Friends, can you see me? Balik mo na, wala na akong film. Can you see me so I can... Yes, we Because see. I want to... Yeah, I want you to see. Ano ba? Ang preno yan si Tony Kuposa na ganyan. Nakukang bala talaga yan. Okay, I am not a lawyer. I am only a beach bum. And please read that. It says, see, come. What does that mean? Nung event natin doon, Ma'am Nina, nung event natin, suot natin, suot ko yan. I wear this because that means Sea and Earth Allies cooperating for the Asia Marine Peace. Okay. So, All right. Thank okay. you. Thank maraming you. salamat. Oh, maraming yeah, salamat. Yeah, Mr. Impossible. Okay. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Fun. Impossible. Mr. Impossible Dreamer, but through his creative ways, is able to make our impossible dream come true. Thank you so much, Attorney Oposa. Yes, that was fun. That okay. Was fun. Yes, we will actually have the open forum. So we would like to invite everyone before we go to the open forum to open our cameras and let's have a group photo. Okay, group photo, and I will turn over to Maribel for further instructions. Okay, Maribeth, group photo, please, please, before we go to the open forum. Yes. One, two, three. Another one. One, two, three. Thank you for. All right. Hey, napaka interesting nun. May uh, first time yata na nagkaroon ng video kiss sa uh, Kamayan Forum online kahit sa offline parang 
Then, then, pa ako nakaralas na kami. Thank you very much, attorney nga po sa very, very enlightening. It was a heavy issue, but with all of that, I think mas gumaan na meron tayong pangarap na talagang gusto natin maprotektahan. At sabi nga niya, no? Unang-una dyan ay yung peace with the environment, peace with ourselves and the environment, which is very important. Now, with the open forum, eto na tayo. I, I hope that you guys prepare your questions and our speakers will immediately, no? This is our first time, no? Ma'am Tessa, that we are doing this. We are, uh, after the question, the speaker will immediately answer the question. Now, for the rules for our open for forum, uh, number one, Kindly raise your hand and unmute your microphone as soon as your name is called. Uh, give your name, organization, or location. Speakers will answer your questions immediately. Questions or comments may also be posted on the chat box. We will call participants to verbalize them or we can read them for you. We will take as many questions as time permits. So let's begin. Okay. So anyone raising their hand? I think the first question that I read from the chat box is from Mom Ellie, if I'm not mistaken. Would you like to ask the questions directly? Or pwede rin namin basahin if uh, you want. Ellie? Yes, Ellie. Please unmute, unmute your mic and maybe you can verbalize your question. Oh, bisan mo na kayang basahin, David. Okay, basahin ko na lang. Okay, here's uh, your question. I hope tama yung gender ng pagkakasabi ko. To Attorney Belica, thank you for the information on Hagedorn House Bill. So, the question is, will the other country claimants uh, to KIG abide by its provisions? And will the Protected Area Management Board include representatives from claimants? Ayun, yun po yung question. Directed to Attorney Bellic. Thank you um, for the question. Uh, sorry, I did not get the name of the uh, person who asked the question. But uh, to answer your, your second question first, no? No, no, the party claimants and other countries are not uh, uh, represented in the management uh, uh, or bureau in the national na, that organization. However, uh, the uh, management board is actually free to invite any resource resource persons, whether uh, local or national uh, or uh, abroad, no, to help them ascertain the decision uh, or or what is the right decision in the management of the uh, marine protected area, uh, and also. Uh, this is internal to us. Ito pong uh, protection at initiative po na ginagawa po natin dito. And the intention as uh, rightfully discussed by Attorney Osa, um, we hope that the Philippines can be uh, the initiating force or uh, the spark of the light to foster unity uh, in our region. Because uh, kahit anho talagang batas ang ipasa po natin dito sa atin, ang ito pong masasakupan po na to ay ang atin hong mga kababayan. Pero uh, in order for the other countries actually to uh, to hold or to go towards the direction of environmental protection is we need to get their consent. And uh, there have been some countries already uh, who actually did uh, manifest unofficially yung kanila pong support uh, dito po sa bill na to, uh, knowing that this is environmental protection. Just like what I said, uh, Sir David and Ma'am Tessa kanina, na bandang huli, kahit sino pa ang may-ari ng teritoryo na yan, kinakailangan pa rin niyang protektahan yung environment na yan because at the end of the day uh, kung masira yan eh wala na rin kayong pagratalutalunan so uh, so that's it yan, yan po ang ano natin in order for this to also be um, uh, sabihin na po natin na uh, international in scope no? or regional in scope it's important for us to uh, 
uh, get the cooperation of the other countries. But uh, this is the first step for the Philippines uh, in doing that because we are first implementing the walking the talk ba tayo po. Ano po? And hopefully, uh, with the initiatives katulad po ni Sir Tony kanina, ni Attorney Posa, who is uh, one of our idol pagdating po talaga sa uh, pag-enforce uh, po ng environmental protection, eh, mayroon hong mga Tony Oposa, Edward Hagedor din po na counterparts tayo sa ibang mga bansa na hihimok din naman sa kanilang mga bansa po na para magkaisa po tayo dito. Okay, thank you. We have another question from a Mr. Alex. Uh, Mr. Alex, would you want to read your question? <clears throat> Uh, David, siguro ikaw na magbasa ulit. <laughs> okay. Uh, from uh, Ma'am Alec. Uh, the government already approved the Philippine hosting of the American bases in our country again. So the question is, I think this is a, a very good for the, all of the speakers to answer. No? How do you think will this affect our dream of making the West Philippine Sea a zone of peace? Thinking na may mga nangyayaring exercises and everything. Uh, dealing with the uh, Americans. Anyone from our speakers? Uh, okay. Uh, siguro ako muna. I don't know if uh, our distinguished uh, speaker, uh, Mr. Silvestre, would also want to uh, uh, respond to this. No. Well, um, as I did mention, environmental protection is a common ground. Uh, we can expect countries really to to put forth their you know military posturing in all of these things, and I think uh na ho yan eh. and even without this bill, without this initiative, yan ho, yan na ho ang direction na po nila. Now, what we are presenting here, number one, is protecting what we can protect right now. Number two. Uh, presenting a common ground where in which we could start our communication or discussions with the other countries without actually asserting uh, territorial uh, rights and uh, you know uh, harping to that uh, dangerous and very sensitive issue of who owns what in historical ownership and whatever. So uh, we would leave that to the uh to the national defense expert to answer and uh I, we would not uh, even uh, attempt to answer the the complicated question po of uh, uh paano makakaapekto ang mga bases uh, ano kasi ang, ang amin ho dito is by putting forth the discussion and and framing it in environmental terms in the light of the environment there is a common ground that we could start discussing and hopefully we can wait, work work our way towards you know a common cause dito po no um uh, admittedly there are still a lot of uh, geopolitical questions that needs to be answered but however at least we have we still uh, um uh, identify you know that there is still a common ground for us which is the environment okay mr silvestre Yeah, first and foremost, uh, yeah, I think see si Attorney Maya covered th that question very well. Uh, but yeah, uh, as for uh, with regards to the American basis, uh, I think we'll have to defer, Shampra, to our national defense ex <clears throat> excuse me, uh, national defense experts. Uh, but yeah, uh, Shampra, we want to highlight yung the marine and coastal marine environment in the West Philippine Sea, and of course, it needs uh, enforcement and uh, of the Philippines for it to become uh, let's say if eventually a declare a marine protected area it will need some sort of enforcement measures and uh, enforcement measures are implemented by our enforcement agencies uh, not just the DNR but also the DAB FAR uh, the Philippine Coast Guard the Philippine National Police uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, as to young political implications of this, uh, yeah, I'd like to defer the question to maybe a different forum, maybe. Thank you. 
baka pag piso na lahat, talagang hindi na pwedeng magkagera-gera kasi piso, hindi ba? Anyway, uh, attorney Oposa? Uh, nasabi naman nila na ni uh, Jeremiah at uh, ni Joaquin. And my only message is that uh, kung alagaan natin ng dagat, tulong-tulong tayo mag-alaga ng dagat, wala tayong away. Hindi na kailangan ng baril. Hindi na tayo kailangan ng kanyon. Alagaan na lang natin dagat. Now, ang... Uh, you write uh, Jeremiah na in every country there are people who have the heart also. Uh, in fact, I was planning to write to uh, Xi Jinping kasi he made a recent statement na gusto niya yung ecological society, mga ganon, marami siyang kuha na gusto niya. So, we will uh, this is this uh, Asia Marine Peace Park. And remember, I don't call it Asian Marine Peace Park. It's Asia Marine Peace Park. Because Asian means tayong may-ari. Hindi naman tayo pwedeng may-ari ng dagat. Hindi eh. naman tayo gumawa ng dagat. But uh, if we can get people to cooperate, pero pag inabuso nila tayo, kailangan natin to defend ourselves. But... Uh, it maybe that's just the the event that just the the just the it is just a defensive that's why again ang ano ko sana kung pumayag lang kung sino sa inyo may kilala kay secretary manalo may approve niya mapail lang yung petition na yan doon sa united nations general assembly maraming tutulong niyan maraming tutulong niyan at saka again it will raise the uh, moral ascendancy and global political popularity of the Philippines na hindi tayo inaaway, tayo makipagkaibigan. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Oposa. Uh, I think si Dr. Uh, Cora Claudio wants to say something. Go ahead, ma'am. <laughs> Yes, uh, sorry that I cannot be on video because I'm dressing up for my uh, badminton game. Okay, uh, I'm glad to see my uh, my old friend, uh, Tony, and that uh, I notice he has mellowed down a lot. No, uh, Both of us used to be in war zones and Tony, unfortunately, I am still in one because I am opposing strongly this pro-nuclear uh, energy per power generation campaign. Uh, now, uh, I think uh, this initiative is really very important. And I suggest that we involve more people organizations because I believe the people in these countries that are uh, uh, quarreling, uh, they are good people. But then their leaders are so much after... Uh, some nationalistic uh, interests uh, that uh, they cannot uh, uh, compromise on. No, uh, the more people we, uh, even our Chinese community here, the Chinoy community, they are really strongly suggesting suggesting that we talk more with the people of China. Uh, so the people organizations will uh, count a lot here, and we really do, we have to do this. Act is still in parallel with our efforts not to lose our position now in the legal uh, arena because even uh, loving relationship between husband and wife, they require a legal <laughs> process, correct? Uh, that uh, uh, some, sometimes fail, but uh, uh, we really need that still. We should not give that up, but more people. That's what my suggestion. And the uh, other activities that will really promote peace, not only those that are uh, on marine uh, protection, but other things that we share in common. And I think we also must do our homework in uh, ensuring that our youth especially uh, are interested still in doing this. Because I am uh, now uh, advising a big group of uh, children of Fisher Fox. Uh, Kamada, and I tell you, not many of them are still interested to pursue uh, even courses on fishing, on aqua, 
uh, you can see that state universities and colleges already now have very good aquaculture and uh, uh, agriculture courses, but they do not have enough students because our youth, uh, many of them want to take up cream. Okay, does anybody know what cream is? Criminology, because they watch Provinciano with uh, the lead actor, uh, handsome, uh, what is his name? <laughs> so everybody, even in the Kalinga Mountains, where I just uh, went to uh, recently, uh, even the ladies want to take up cream. Nobody wants to take up agriculture and uh, any course in... Uh, <laughs> aquaculture or fishery, uh, unfortunately, if our youth will be like this, then those of us who are already in the pre-departure area uh, we will not be able to continue what we are talking about. Okay. Th thank you, uh, Dr. Claudio. Um, thank you, Dr. Cora Claudio. Ms. Rachel? Yeah? Ms. Yeah. Rachel? Yeah, Ma'am Rachel, you're raising your hand. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. The approach of Attorney Oposa is overwhelming. Uh, since from, uh, from the start, we were shown video, and later we were turned into dreamers of hope, uh, in which uh, we heal our planet Earth. And also, we know that for a fact, uh, China is very powerful. So it says, if we cannot beat them, let's join force and let peace uh, prevail and touch the hearts of everyone. When peace reigns, God reigns. Thank you. Okay. Uh, to you, Atomio Posa. You are God sent, a messenger of peace for the environment. We will join you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Thank Very you. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Ma'am Rachel. Uh, that, that, uh, that petition that I uh, had people sign uh, is available for more signatures. Uh, isa sa mga nakapirma, isa, isa sa mga una pinapirma ko doon, Jeremiah, si, si, si Ed. Uh, tapos, uh, uh, isa pa yung Senate Committee on, Senate Chair Committee on Environment. So sila yung mga big time, sila yung paiimbitahin ko doon sa mga ambassador kasi kung ako kung mayroon ng imbitasyon, wala naman papansin. Pero kung yung mga senador at saka congressman ang pipirma, uh, pupunta siguro sila. Basta, yun na nga, yung punto ko lang na hindi na ako, Sir Will Cora, hindi na ako nakikipag-away ngayon. Hindi na ako nakikipag-away. So sana lang kung sino may kilala sa inyo kay, kay uh, Secretary Manalo. Manalo. Oo. Oh, oh. Sino may kilala sa inyo, sabihin mo na ano, na all, all, wala namang that's nothing. It's just all, that, nothing to do. It, it, all he he all he, he will only say one sentence to the deputy permanent representative na sige, i-file nyo yan. Ganun lang. Tapos that will make news all over the world. To go up no, to Pilipinas. Diba, guwapo ang Pilipinas. I mean, hindi guwapo, but we will have the moral ascendancy. Now, I think Vicky Segovia might be here. She's a friend of the of the family of the DFA secretary. Sino? Sino? Vicky Segovia. Ah, nandiyan si Vicky? Okay, Vicky. Vicky, si Vicky. <laughs> Silala mo, Vicky, yan si Secretary Manalo. Sige, sabihin mo sa kanya. All he has to do is say yes. <laughs> Okay, I think there's also one more question, uh, David. Yeah, I, I ko lang siguro yung ano, in connection with uh, what uh, Ma'am Rachel said and the earlier, ano, I ko lang yung sarili ko rin question. Na, na, uh, there's already a bill no, by Congressman Hagedorn and napaaganda rin ng concept ni uh, Attorney Oposa. Do you think it would be possible in some way no, to work on, uh, kasi li, alam mo kahit ano natin gawin, legalities is always uh, one of the solutions. So, to work on a treaty. No, uh, with ASEAN plus China for creating the peace zones uh, and the protection of the, of the uh, West Philippine Sea and the other areas that pinag away awayan Baka possibly yes. na, possibly kaya yun? So yes, uh, magandang idea yan, David. Magandang idea yan. Uh, I may be going to uh, Indonesia to give a talk uh, sometime late August 
uh, because it is the anniversary of the Indonesian Center for Environmental Law. They're inviting me to give a talk there. And uh, hopefully, sama ko din si Ed. Uh, nandun naman yung ASEAN Secretariat. Kung, kung kasama ko si Congressman, di siyempre magkikinig sila kay Congressman. Ako na lang ang kapag career niya. Kami magpapaliwanag doon because that's a good idea. We can have a treaty to declare the Asia Marine Peace Park. Diba? We can have a treaty. Yeah. At saka, ma, 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 I, I don't want to say ma-defensive ang, ang China. They will, put in a, they will be put in a spot na, oh, oo nga. Because yun na nga yung aking, yun na yung aking gustong ipaliwanag. That, forgive me for repeating this, but we will have peace on earth if we have peace with the earth. Kung alagaan natin, hindi tayo mag-aaway. King kaibigan tayo lahat. After all, gibain nyo yan. Eh, may mga anak ba kayo? May mga apo ba kayo? Kung gibain natin yan ngayon, di wala nang makikita isda yung ating mga apo, anak at kapo. So, that's a good idea. That's why the... That's a good idea, David. And... Um, Hopefully, if matutuloy natin yung, matutuloy ko yung meeting na ipapamiting ko yung mga ambassadors ng, ambassadors ng mga ASEAN countries, uh, hopefully in July, pagpalik ni Ed, um, we will propose that. Kahit na hindi mo na, hindi mo na treaty, kahit na communicate, kahit na ano lang mo na, kahit na, basta, kahit na, Kahit na one line lang, yung line lang yun ng we will have peace on earth if we have peace with the earth. Kumirma lang kayong lahat. When we agree to that basic truth, everybody, everything else will follow. Okay. Sige. Um, we have, I think, a comment from GP, a question from Eric of GPP Bicol. Yes, but before, uh, I'll, I'll be reading the question, but before that, I think Attorney Belhika uh, would like to add something. Okay. Yeah. Um, th thank you again, um, uh, Sir Tony. And uh, I just want to add, no, for every, for each and every one of us. You know, there is a principle, kasi, in public policy that that public policy actually is created by public discourse and public public opinion and public expression creates public opinion and public opinion actually creates public policy. So this these kinds of engagements that we have right now na pinag-uusapan po natin na napakaganda ho ng vision na uh, binigay po ni uh, uh, Sir Tony uh, yung uh, intentions ho ng bill na na, na ipinorward ho ni Congressman Hagidorn uh, yung discussion po ni uh, Sir Joaquin kanina about uh, the importance of West Philippine Sea as long as we keep on talking about this in our circles the environmental circles and we keep you know floating a, a noble and the impossible dream na sinasabi, uh, I do believe that uh, we're, we're really helping to push forward uh, this idea that the impossible will become possible. So it, uh, I, I would also suggest that uh, mag-host pa tayo ng iba't iba pa mga forum, yung mga nagsusulat po sa atin, sulat po natin ito sa kung ano mga publication. If you are a, in teaching in schools, in teaching in uh, sa iba hong mga universities, you articulate this with your children. Kasi naalala ko nga ho, sabi ni, uh, ni Sir Tony din, naalala ko, yung mga isda daw ng Pilipinas, eh tinsa naman yung mga isda dyan sa uh, China, yung isda dyan sa Vietnam. Magkakamag-anak din ho yan. Kaya ho, ta ta tao lang ho ang naghihiwa-hiwalay. But, uh, you know, if we keep on uh, discussing and talking about this, what we are not ho, Another that treaty is uh, more uh, reachable than uh, what we actually think uh, even right now. So yun lang po, Sir David. Oh, very well said. Magkakamag-anak naman sila. That's why pinakanta ko kayo lahat ng, pinakanta ko kayo lahat ng imagine. Kasi uh, we are all dreamers. And if we just live in peace, okay lang tayo lahat. And what you said, Jeremiah, is uh, quite uh, wise. It says, Law is nothing more than policy distilled in legal form and language. And remember that policy is nothing more than a reflection, a mirror image of principle. 
if we agree on that principle of having peace on earth by making peace with the earth, then the policy will follow and the laws will follow. Napaaganda na. No? Kasi sabi nga, yung mga isda, wala namang immigration, wala namang visa. No? <laughs> Upot na sila doon sa Pilipinas. Wala, wala akong territorial dispute sila, <laughs> Sir David. <laughs> tayo, tayo lang. Well, anyway, ayan. Thank you for that. There's a question from uh, Sir Eric Lucena of GPPB Call. Sabi niya dito, with regards to INIPAS, what particular implementing implementing agency that would enforce it and ensure the protection of marine sanctuary. At ito po ba daw ay, would it be the Philippine Navy, PLGU, BIPAR, or a commission? Siguro, I, I'll ask si uh, Sir Silvestre dahil uh, yan po ay kanilang uh, expertise pa. Hello, thank you very much for uh, the question. So, when it comes to the e uh the... Uh, the authorized uh, no, uh, agencies uh, to enforce uh, this include the DNR, uh, the local government, and the Philippine Coast Guard, and the Philippine National Police. Okay. All right. Uh, the AFP also provides support, of course. The, uh, Philipp- uh, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, sorry. And the DA uh, before. Thank you. Uh, uh, for marine sanctuaries, I, I think the local government code also provides for establishment of marine sanctuaries at, uh, through local ordinances. So that's also uh, uh, the responsible agencies for that are the local government and the DA before. And of course, in partnership then with the uh, PNP, the PCG, and the PNP. Thank you. And the DNR, yes. Sir David, uh, Ma'am Tessa, um, I y- just want to impress to everyone that the we, we are really very careful na ang uh, go-to agency natin dito is not a military or armed um, agency but more of an environmental. So, uh, environmental protection. But of course, we're not really dismissing the fact <laughs> of the of the difficulty or the sensitivity of of uh you know the territorial disputes but nonetheless uh just to highlight that uh all of these are uh in environmental matters uh, which should also take in consideration of course the sensitivity of uh, whatever international dispute uh it also opens uh the possibility of referring this for alam niyo po yung uh, diplomatic channels din po kapag ka merong hindi ho ma-enforce uh, available pa rin po ang mga diplomatic channels na idadaan ho sa DFA uh, para magkatulungan ho sa enforcement. Yeah, ba- baka mapasok din to sa mga discussion sa COP, di ba? Because this can help sa climate change, sa ating food security. Yeah. Kaya the nations should be helping one another. I'm also praying na you know, the, the bill on the Uh, Environmental Protection and Enforcement Bureau would eventually be passed. So, para naman yung DNR, may sarili silang ano, ano, dedicated law enforcement for the environment. Kasi yun ang problema. Eh. Pag pasalin-salin, minsan nakatakas na yung ano, hindi pa nahuhuli. Well, anyway, I think Ma'am Nina is uh, raising, uh, Dr. G is raising her hand. Yeah. Dr. G, yes? Yeah, I have a question for each of them. Um, well, of course, it's we're all dreaming. But let me just ask for with some realist with some questions that will put us on the ground. Um, you know the quarrel among nations is also because of the supposedly big reserves of oil and gas in the the ocean in that part of the of the of the world. Yun bang mga where there are big uh, reserves of oil and gas are they? in the area where we have we are wanting to be protected area maybe that's for mr silvestre and then for jeremiah who i'm so glad to meet because he's a nephew of my good friend um uh good jeremiah uh oh my gosh Uh, what the, okay well you know this is all good no i mean every 
uh, ideally everybody should be for this uh, vision. But what do you think, who do you think will oppose it? What uh, interests will oppose it? And how big is that challenge? And then for Tony, Tony, we need uh, your guidance on how to um, publicize this, how we can help. Um, it's great. And when we, you, we talk, you talked about it, we were excited because, you know, this is an actualization of what we have been wanting to do to protect the, the environment, the, the earth. We will need your help. How do we help you? How do we um, enlarge our circles uh, besides singing and so that this will become uh, a reality? So those are my questions and for each of them. Uh, Mr. Sylvester, yung oil and gas. All okay, right. let's start. Okay, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, so for oil and gas, so uh, very clear in the month of their oil contracts in the uh, Kalea and Island Group under the Department of Energy, uh, and and the Inaipas is also very clear. Uh, the Inaipas Act, I mean, is also very clear that uh, extraction of oil and gas uh, mm. resources is uh, prohibited in uh, Naipas protected areas. So, uh, for sure, if we are to declare. Uh, protected areas in certain parts of the Kalean Island Group or the West Philippine Sea, uh, these activities would be prohibited under Philippine laws. So maybe that's one consideration for declaring marine protected areas. Uh, and then uh, I suppose it wouldn't make sense also to declare marine protected areas in areas where there are already ongoing or existing or operational oil and gas uh, contracts with the Department of Energy. So that's also another consideration. Uh, does that answer the question? So meron na doon, in the areas that we want protected, meron na doon, ano, mga existing e drilling for exploration and extraction? Uh, under the proposed uh, House Bill po of Congressman Hagedorn? Yeah. Uh, I think the the house bill po is uh avoids these areas. Oh. But definitely uh in the West Philippines Marin Pung areas with oil and gas resources and Marin Din Pung areas where there are oil and gas resources that are already uh uh being extracted. Okay. Thank so you. we'll just wait for the for the concessions to end. Don't know, Bayon. We can yes, we can explore this for later on, but definitely while they're ongoing, uh, <laughs> it, it, yeah, he, yeah, they declare uh because it's like. Declaring a mining area as a protected area. Okay. It wouldn't uh, yes, well. so may contract na yun, no? Mm -mm. And it's uh prohibited po. and make contract then po. Okay. So you, Jeremiah? Yeah, thank you, Mam Nina. It's uh, also a pleasure for me that uh I'm very close friend of my Tita Evelyn. <laughs> uh, I finally met you. Okay. Um just to add to uh what uh uh, Sir Joaquin did mention uh, the the areas that are being declared, or at least it attempts to declare as a protected area, uh, is the three nautical miles from the baseline of uh, uh, the islands, uh, the KIG and the Scarborough, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the from what uh, Congressman Hagidorn, we uh, the 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 team have also uh, gathered is that. Uh, the three nautical miles is in essence like uh, 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 it's within the 10 kilometer radius basically ma'am uh, where most of the fish uh, have their breeding ground the, the atolls and the the uh, corals are there so that's the reason why the main protection the main concern was the protection of these atolls 
mm-hmm. and uh, these coral reefs. Now, I'm just not so sure if uh, the drilling are actually being done within the three nautical miles right now. So if they are, then uh, then they would be within the marine protected area. But let me just uh, give some quick uh, clarification of uh, of uh, about this marine protected area. Does it mean that there are that uh, once an area is uh, declared as marine protected, does it follow that no uh, economic or no um, should we say uh, human activity uh, is already barred or prohibited in the area? Well, the answer is it would really uh, be depending on the uh, management uh, board and bureau. Uh, there are some standard. Um, activities that are barred totally, katulad ho, dynamite fishing, yung mga poisoning, of course, these are already barred. But as to the uh, activities that could actually contribute to the economy or uh, that would uh, actually contribute to the national security, uh, this could be tackled on a case-to-case basis by the um, uh, management board or management bureau uh, to ensure that as they would undertake these activities, ay hindi ho masisira yung environment. So there is a sort of a flexibility for for the uh, secretary of the DNR actually to identify areas, mm-hmm. uh, not to be uh, too stringent about things. But one of the uh, flexibility that is being given to the uh, secretary of the DNR is that upon the recommendation of this management board, is they could also declare a certain area as a strict protection zone. In this case, talagang kahit anong human activity po ay pinagbabawal. Which now, Ma'am Nina, brings me to your question sa akin. Uh, what are the uh, oppositions uh, that uh, we are ex- we expect or probably we have already received in, in, in si, si Congressman uh, in, 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 in uh, short, tri- small trickles well, una po is the misunderstanding probably by some uh, fisher folks, mga kababayan natin na mga nangingisda ho dyan sa si area na yan, thinking that hindi na ho sila pwede mangisda. But uh, I did mention during my presentation that uh, a marine protected area does not mean that fishing is prohibited. Yeah. What is prohibited is the destructive and or... Uh, unregistered or unregulated fishing. Not unregistered, sorry, but unregulated uh, fishing. Kasi ho, kapag ka, patayin mo naman sa pangingisda, eh, unregulated rin ho, eh, baka ho, hindi na natin kailang intayin ng ibang bansa para masira po yung sarili nating environment at based din po sa kwento po ni Congressman Hagedorn when he was still a mayor, uh, marami ho siyang nakukuhang mga local pouchers local na mga fisher folks na sila din ho ang nag, nag uh, i-engage sa mga destructive fishing. So that's that's uh, one of the areas na kailangan ho linawin kasi meron ho mga nag-express ng kanilang opposition to this but hopefully ay nalinawan po sila. Now as to the government agencies of course, not really opposed ma'am Nina but uh, who have expressed the concern uh, as to the to, as to the implication of uh, this bill uh, to the ongoing uh, sensitivity of the territorial dispute, uh, especially the DND and the, the military. Uh, so they've already uh, gave their suggestions right now. So uh, maganda naman po yung kanila hong mga uh, pinakita, sinasabi, kasi of course there are islands right now that are currently being occupied, Mang Nina, by uh, China and uh, even other countries, ano ang gagawin natin doon. But again, uh, if you would, if I would go back to the flexibility of the bill, uh, the Management Bureau and the uh, uh, DN, DNR Secretary could take that in consideration in crafting a a, uh, a management uh, operation ano, uh, plan in certain yeah. areas na occupied ho. Ano po. Uh, as to the as to the uh, international concern, I would suppose, no, hindi ko naman ho, uh, hindi naman ho privy, pero I would suppose uh, this would be a concern for the countries who would think that this legislation is a uh, a territorial in nature. Kumbaga, uh, we're doing this to assert our territorial sovereignty. 
uh, on these disputed uh, uh, disputed um, islands. But however, I think uh, by communicating well with their ambassadors, which uh, Sir Tony and uh, Kong Edward would want to do, makita po nila hindi kahit sino may ari niyan, sa atin lahat yan, masira man yung sa amin, apektado pa rin kayo, masira yung sa inyo, apektado pa rin kami. So yun yun po ma'am Nina no so that's uh, in sum at what we're uh, you know dealing with right now. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Thank you ma'am. So Tony, uh, tutulungan mo ba kami? <laughs> tutulungan namin ikaw. <laughs> yeah, well um sana lang ako na I don't know how to expand it. I just uh, had I prepared that petition and made and invited friends to co-sign, filed it in the UN SANA, and then, yun nga, kung si Vicky kilala nila yung sino sa inyong mga kilala ng ano, Secretary ng Foreign Affairs, and that can that can uh, become a global movement. Eh. And that is not only, that's not, and uh, this idea is not just happening in the Philippines, uh, it's not just in the Philippines, marami ng mga lugar sa buong mundo na imbis binagaawayan ng yung territory, inaalagaan nila. There are many places like that already. So, uh, how to expand that, I really don't know. Ang, basta ang gagawin lang namin ni Ed, nag-usap kami kahapon, dito kami nag-lunch, na nagkantahan kami, uh, anong tawag dito, na papatawag namin, ng, magpapatawag kami ng meeting, and, hopefully a press conference kasi if that idea is uh, spread out maraming magiging kaibigan kahit mga kilala natin sa China uh, kakampi na rin sa atin pero mahirap nga kung sa China kasi authoritative yung kanilang autocratic yung kanilang gobyerno doon so I even want to reach out also to to the Ramon Magsaysay community. Pero, you know, um, sanay kasi akong hindi pinapansin. Kaya I just go ahead and do things I want to do. I just do it alone. Ngayon, may kakampi ako. May congressman na yung kakampi ko. Uh, so, baka may makinig na sa kanya. And uh, hopefully, if... Uh, well, the secretary of uh, the new secretary of defense, I hopefully will invite him also to the to that meeting because he happens to be my compare and he was my classmate in our master of laws. So kaibigan kami. In fact, I just saw him about two two three weeks ago, and then bigla siyang naapoit na secretary na. <laughs> so maybe if we can get them and. Again, we're not asking, we're not objective for the, ano, yung balik-balik lang yung aking, yung punto na kung alagaan natin yung dagat, maging kaibigan tayo lahat. Yeah. Can we, uh, do you want us to call for more signatures for your petition? We can put it in our website. Well, yeah, I can, I can send you the copy, but you know, kahit na, uh, si Kuan nga, gusto ni si yung isang columnist natin dito na supports the idea also. Uh, si Jarius Bundok na pwede nating papirmahin lahat. Pero, well, whatever. At saka meron pa yung mga change.org or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You want Aba that? Abaas. Hindi ako marunong niya mga ganyan eh. Um, kung Kung sino lang ang gustong tumulong, sige, tulong. Si, si David is our communications uh, person and I think we can we can think of a program, no, David? To popularize it kasi asabi nga ni Jeremiah, you know, it's it's um what the people want. And if they agree on the principle, then the policy makers hopefully will be influenced. Diba? Yes, so, very good. Yeah, yeah. tama yan, Jeremiah. Kung, kung... Remember, another line I would like to share with you, and uh, David, that is, um, that is a, a, a compliment to you, your ability to communicate. 
that the power of the people is more powerful than the people in power. Yeah. Popular support is what is important at this point. Oh, kasi kung may isang million o sampung million ng paper man yan, pwede okay na, di ba? Yep. Siguro makinig na si Manalo, makinig na sila. <laughs> okay. At saka, so, yeah. wala, akong, wala akong pakialam kasi sa mga tao na nasa puder. Kasi I uh, I learned my lesson that government and I uh, I do not no offense to the people in government but government especially the top people in government are the most unreliable and the most fickle partner dahil kausap mo sila ngayon ang ganda ng kausap mo mamaya maya hindi na sila hindi na naman sila ang kausap mo kasi iba na naman iba na naman nakaupo doon sa posisyon na yun eh, hindi gaya sa inyo sa BNB ikaw uh, Joaquin nandiyan ka sa lower level yung sekretary ninyo, mamaya, kilala ko yan si Tony. Matagal ko ng kaibigan yan. Oo, oh, nga dyan, siya nakaupo ngayon. Bukas Tapos maya-maya, hindi na naman siya. Natuto ako, wala na talaga. Hindi na ako nagkikipag-usap sa gobyerno. Kasi they are the most fickle and most unreliable partners. Kung sinong papalit, iba na namang usapan. Okay. okay. Um, there are just some comments. Uh, chat box, maybe David, you can uh, you can read them, and then we can go to some announcements and to the closing remarks. David. Yeah. Okay. Uh, from uh, yeah, I think this is from Sir Joaquin Sil Silvestre. No, sabi niya. Uh, uh, there are different categories under the NIPAS, all with varying levels. And layers of protection. Alakayan ko, hindi ko mabasa na maayos. For example, natural parks are completely strict protection zones wherein only scientific activities and regulated tourism may be allowed. An example of the economic activity or value or value of protection in natural park is protection of resources and biodiversity to have a spillover effect of ecosystem services to area outside of the protected area. Another category includes protected landscape or seascapes when there is more consideration for resources, uses, and economic activities like tourism. From being game, instead, it should be called marine regulated area instead of marine protected area. One wonders if this management protection board would function like the Environment Management Board of the, I think this is a question, right? Of the PIESSEIA -E process. It is, it, if it is, it is quite worrisome. It, it will also serve as a conduit to argue economic development but would always result to the expense of the marine environment. If it is a protected area, it should, I believe, should be the true meaning of the word protected, delineate its spatial coverage. So as regards naman, no, Ma'am Tessa, siguro address ko rin yung bigla ako lalagay sa spotlight ni, ni Dr. G. <laughs> uh, I think one of the, the, the help that we all of us could, could help with the of Oposa is to address the, the petition targeted to the President and the Department of, of Foreign Affairs. No? The petition asking them to submit uh, the, the proposal of the of Oposa in behalf or on behalf of the Filipino people. Uh, not only of Attorney Oposa, but on behalf of the, the Filipino people. And on my end, siguro, my commitment, sabi ko nga sa chat kanina, is to talk with the Asia-Pacific Greens Federation because it is a, a collection of green organizations and green parties who are already in government to also adopt, no, adopt the, uh, the position paper of Attorney Oposa and perhaps uh, create something out of the, the bill of uh, Congressman Hagedorn, isa sa malaking in in influence ko rin sa inspiration eh. That's why I decided to, you know, go last year on the campaign dahil talagang idol ko si si Governor pa siya noon, si Governor Hagedorn. So napakaganda na isa sa sana kong una sa environment. Sana tumakbo siya sa sa Senado para may bagong head yung ano environmental uh, committee doon. <laughs> okay, so let's now go to some announcements. Uh, first, on the evaluation of this forum, the GC Secretariat will share a link to an uh, evaluation form for today's Kamayan session in the chat box. The link will also be flashed on screen. Please take time to give us your feedback. 
this will help improve the forum. There, you can see it now. So please give us a fill out the evaluation. We'd like to hear from you. David? Also, for those who would require an e-certificate of participation, uh, we are requiring, dalawa lang naman po, napakadali. Una, the participant must have been actually present in the forum and not merely pre-registered. And secondly, the participant must submit a duly accomplished evaluation form. So again, for those who require an e-certificate, you must uh, at least follow these two things. Uh, then we will send you the e-certificate for today's forum. Okay, I would like to thank our speakers and those who participated in the open forum. It was a productive, uh, pro productive session. And it is now my honor to introduce my favorite colleague and idol, she finished BS Chemistry, Magna Cum Laude at the College of the Holy Spirit, pursued MS Chemistry in Marquette University in Win Wisconsin, USA, and obtained her PhD in Environmental Science from UP Diliman. She is the convener and first president of Green Convergence after her valuable and significant contributions to making Miriam College a dark green school. She is currently the project director of Ako Ang Bukas Movement, Quantum Leap to Carbon Neutrality 2050. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Angelina Galang for the closing remarks. Yay! Yeah. I didn't think, I don't think you needed to introduce me. Anyway, <laughs> what more can I say? I think uh, everyone has, uh, many have said it already. This is a uh, most exciting vision. And we would like to help in actualizing it. And our speakers, starting from the visionary himself and um, those who, the, the two handsome young men who gave us the information on uh, the aspects of its um, importance, its biodiversity specifically, and um, the law that the Philippine law that might, uh, that hopefully will bring it to fruition. Um, these three speakers and their talks have given us a, whole, um, a very good set of very good information on how, on the, the idea and how this can be um, pushed. No? So, we are dreamers, but we're also realists. And so we will cooperate to, to actualize the dream, but we will also fight. Uh, hopefully, Tony will continue to help us fight the, um, the forces that might derail the vision and uh, the law. Uh, ganun naman, ganun naman firme, no? uh, not everyone has our ecological paradigm. We still have to go a long way before we have a critical mass of citizens who will push for sustainable development based on the laws of nature. But um, knowing this, we are prepared as we have been doing in other with other issues to push the positive, minimize the negatives, hopefully with our continued conversation with everyone and with communication strategies. So I would like to thank very much our speakers for taking time to share with us this very exciting prospect of making the West Philippine Sea an Asia Marine Park and a protected area for the sake of the world and for generations to come. So thank you all for coming. See you next month. Right. That's for the 397th Kamayan that, that will be in July 21. We hope to see you all. Uh, see you all next month and enjoy the rest of the day. Um, your, your, David, you want to say anything? Uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat and hopefully marami tayong natutunan today and hopefully all of us no, could support uh, very good laws like uh, what is being uh, proposed by Congressman Hagedorn and also 
do something no, to support uh, Attorney Oposa. This is our commitment to ourselves but to our the future generation. Kasi mawala man tayo pag nasira yan. Ako, kawawa naman yung mga susunod po sa atin. So, thank you very much for attending today. Thank you all. God bless. Okay. Oh, David, get, uh, we'll get in touch, David. Sure, no problem po. We'll be glad to help. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. And please, uh, Ana, pakitignan daw yung evaluation form. It's not accepting comments. Suplado daw yung evaluation form. Okay, <laughs> Ayaw magpa-evaluate. <laughs> Take care, Take care. Bye. Have a Thank great you weekend. and see you. God bless July. everyone. Third, third Friday Bye. of the week. Oh, ayo ayo ninyo mga bisaya. Ayo ayo. <laughs> ayo ayo ninyo. <laughs>